everyone. I'm Carrie Lippert Gillespie, and this is The Homestand, the official podcast of the Kansas City Royals. Each episode will bring on a guest to connect you in a fun, new, exciting way to the Kansas City Royals. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss a thing. All right, we're excited to welcome our guest for today's episode, Jonathan Heasley. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Happy to be on. Yeah. Excited. What do you think of our set here? It's pretty nice. I felt I wasn't expecting it to be like this official when I walked in, so I kind of feel a little nervous. I've never done a podcast with like all the lighting and all the cameras and stuff. Sure. So we'll see how it goes, but yeah. I'm excited. So anyone who's uh, you know <clears throat> listening to this only, we are in the Hall of Fame. Have you been back I here? have been in here. We came... Uh, like the year we got drafted, we had an orientation here and they okay. like kind of brought us through and showed us everything. So pretty cool. How cool is it that you have two like current teammates <laughs> yeah, it's pretty right crazy. here off camera? We have Salvi and Zach Granke. We have their jerseys and they have a bunch of stuff here on the wall. So you get to play literally with two legends. It's pretty crazy, pretty special, especially just like with, I don't know, it's kind of at the beginning, especially last year, like pitching my first game to Salvi, I was just kind of starstruck, honestly, it's pretty crazy. And then we signed Granke. Um, so hearing like he was coming in in spring training, just wild to have two guys that have done such amazing things and continue to do so. So it's pretty cool and pretty special to be on like the same pitching staff with a guy who's done what Grinky has and then to be able to have Salvi behind the plate. It's just crazy special for sure. Yeah. Two legends and you know, two people who like you can learn a lot from each of their positions. You, you know, obviously have to interact with Salvi as a pitcher and then Grinky, you know, is the same position as you. So it's not even just like their legend and their, their random outfielders. Like they yeah. are specifically like people that you interact with and what you do. Yeah. It's crazy. Just uh, like sit in the dugout and have Grinky over there, you know, just talking about hitters and all kinds of stuff. Just the experience and knowledge that both of them have. I remember like my first scouting meeting with Salvi, just listening to him just rattle off all the information. And it's just like he's been catching and seeing these same hitters for 13, 14 years, however long it's been. So just crazy. And then Granky, who's pitched for 17 or 18 now, I don't even know, has like 500 starts. It's just insane. Like. I'm over here trying to get to like 100 innings. And he's got, <laughs> it's just crazy. We all got to start somewhere. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I was talking to Lynch yesterday, actually, in the dugout, just like it's crazy to think about like how my arm, like, you know, it's just like there's no way at 40 years old, like 38, that I'm going to be able to be doing this. It's just crazy to think about. But I guess that, that's why they're few and far between. They don't come around often like that, so it's crazy, but very cool to be alongside them for sure. Well, you got a wild till 38 like Granky. You're 25. Exa that's what I'm saying. I don't know how he does it. Yeah. It's like I got to figure out what you do to be able to do it that long. There you go. Well, I want to reverse a little bit and talk about what you were like as a child growing up in Plano, Texas. For anyone who doesn't know, Plano is like North Dallas. Um, and I know that you are still really into like football in that area and your college football team, but tell us what it was like growing up in Texas. Yeah. So I was actually born in North Carolina, but like moved before I even remember anything. And then pretty much no Texas is all I've known. So I'm a proud Texan. Uh, some people hate it, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, I love Plano. I grew up there, um, older brother, older sister. So I was the youngest, um, Great family. Uh, grew up there. Went to Preston Wood Christian Academy, a school there in Plano. Um, played football and baseball there in high school. Uh, a lot of good friends, um, a lot of lifelong friends, you know, and families there that I grew up with just playing sports and everything. Um, but yeah, sports was kind of always my thing growing up. You know, I played football. I remember playing flag football, basketball, baseball always were pretty much the main three. And then I kind of just went more towards football and baseball in high school and then just kind of decided I liked baseball more. Football was awesome. Nothing better than a Friday night, but I just felt like baseball, I just love pitching and uh, just kind of everything that came along with it. So that was awesome. But um, yeah, growing up in Plano, it was great. Uh, our family kind of settled in there. We were there for a while and now my brother and sister are all over the place. My sister and her husband are in Florida and then my brother and his wife are in Colorado, so oh my God. we're kind of all, all over the place Two now. Two great places to have exactly. family to go visit. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so we're, we're spoiled with that, but my parents are still in Dallas area, so they're kind of traveling all over the place trying to keep up with everybody, but yeah, that's pretty much the Heasley family story right there. I love that. I'm not surprised to hear that you played football. You, in my opinion, you are built like a football player. Like you could be, I feel like you could be a tight end or something like that. So I'm not surprised to hear that. Yeah, I was, I was a receiver. I was a little skinnier back in high school. I was <laughs> probably like 40 pounds skinnier. So I was a little quicker to be a receiver, but yeah, now probably more of a tight end build, maybe something like that. But I don't think I could do it. Seeing those guys in the NFL, they're way too big. But yeah. 
Yeah, I had a, I had a little more speed than I do now. Okay. A little, a little less we weight. All, don't we all? Yeah, Thank exactly, you. exactly. <laughs> um, tell us some about college. Oklahoma State, correct? Oklahoma State, yep. So I uh, committed to Oklahoma State out of high school, actually, with like two of my really good buddies that I played with growing up, which was really cool. Um, both of them are still pretty good friends now. Back in, one of them actually moved to Oklahoma, but the other one's still in Plano area. And then uh, Oklahoma State, also where I met my wife, so that's pretty special. Uh, met her there my sophomore year, just kind of through some mutual friends. Guy on the baseball team and his girlfriend were roommates, and then we just kind of met through some mutual friends and kind of hit it off, and here we are today. So that's a pretty special part of Oklahoma State, but enjoyed my time there. Two years of baseball, really good. Um, not the best uh, performance-wise necessarily, but I had a great time and uh, met a lot a lot more friends there that I was able to build good relationships with and obviously learned a lot just about the game and kind of developed a little bit there and uh, gave me the opportunity to be where I am today. So very thankful for everything that happened there. And obviously college is just like a super special experience and uh, I'm glad that I did it, you know. Now, I've been asking some of the other guys when they come on the show when it hit them that they could be a professional because you ask a lot of little kids when they're, you know, six, seven years old and their dream is to be a professional yeah. football player, basketball player. And I'm sure you had that dream too, but when do you get to the point? And it's funny because they've all had different answers right. of like when they realized it could be possible for them. So do you have a moment where you had a killer game or something like that and you were all of a sudden just like, I might be able to get paid to do this actually? Yeah, it wasn't like super early on, honestly like you can my parents too like we like I was okay but I was never really like that good I was just kind of average whatever I was never like <clears throat> on the best like club team or whatever growing up and then I think it was when I was like 14 or 15 one of my coaches actually was like told my parents like hey you need to like maybe like maybe start investing in this a little more like I think he could be pretty good like he has a chance to be good and I was like all right like whatever and didn't really think much about it and then I just kind of started throwing harder and harder and I think it was like my summer before my sophomore year, I got invited to like one of those showcase things. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is sweet, like <laughs> whatever. And that was the first time I hit 90 and it was like a huge deal. And I was like, okay, like, and then like, that's when college coaches started reaching out and stuff. And I was like, okay, like maybe this, maybe this has a chance. And then kind of just kept getting stronger and throwing a little bit harder. And then the interest kind of grew more and that was kind of it. Um, I loved football, like I said, but at the same time, I kind of knew like baseball was probably where I had the best shot sure. um, and just kind of the development that was happening, whatever. And then, um, so it was probably like that summer before my sophomore year when I was kind of like, all right, like maybe I have a chance to like, you know, go to college, obviously it was the first step. And then to think about having the opportunity to play professionally, it was just kind of crazy. Cause like you said, it's that dream you have as a kid and you always hear about like, oh yeah, like I have this dream, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But when you sit back and realize like how crazy it is that you're actually like living out your childhood dream, it's kind of just surreal and it's just such a cool feeling to think that you actually made it happen. So it's, it's pretty special. I love that because my childhood dream was to be on TV and I came from a really small town. So I would tell people like, I'm going to be on TV someday. Yeah. And they'd be like, okay, little girl, like yeah. do your math homework. And you I'd are. be like, yeah, so exactly. it's funny to hear that and to hear you say that. But, you know, you were drafted in 2018, and there's a lot of guys from that group that are here now and kind of came up through the minor leagues together. What has it been like to have those guys by your side? You know, it's, it's I don't want to say it's rare, but it doesn't happen all the time that you get drafted with the same guys, and then you're all up here in the big leagues on the same team, like at the same time. It's kind of unique and, and wonderful, I would think. Absolutely. It's, it's crazy, and it's just like <clears throat> every time I get asked about it, it's just like... Uh so crazy to think about of like such the group that we have and just kind of I think the rare part about it is just like how close we are and like how good of relationships we have with each other like I feel like I'm not like trying to bash any other teams or anything I'm just saying like I feel like a lot a lot of times guys just get caught up in the competition and you know you start like maybe rooting against each other or stuff like that but I feel like for us coming up at least with the group I've been with it's just always been like a healthy competition and it's like hey oh sweet Lynch went out and threw seven shutout now I'm gonna have to go do the same thing you know where it's like we just push each other and it's not really like we're trying to ever get at each other or anything and just <clears throat> the way the game works you know with all the transactions and guys moving up and down I think that's just a crucial part of us having success and just kind of keeping the morale and everything is you know we all have guys pulling for each other and yeah, it's going to be awkward like if you get sent down for like one of your boys but at the same time like deep down we're happy for each other and we know that it's for the better and like we're going to go up there and compete and whoever got sent down is going to go do what they're doing and they'll be back before you know it so it's like just one of those things where it's super healthy i think mm -hmm. and just 
pushes everybody to get better, honestly. And I think that's uh, part of the reason why we're seeing some of these guys step up. And, you know, a lot of guys are coming up and having success uh, pretty quickly. So I think it's just a glimpse of the future for sure. Yeah. It's funny. Brady, I think Brady Singer, I think it was him, in a post-game press one time, you know, someone asked him about seeing the other guys do good. And he's like, honestly, when I when I see, you know, the other starting pitchers do good, like it makes me be like, yeah, like I that's what I got to do. Like he's bringing right. it. It's like having your teammates back. <clears throat> exactly. And it really, he said something to the fact that it motivates him to bring his best up and be there for his guys even yeah, more. Exactly. I think you've seen it a few times here where we've gone on some pretty good stretches of guys just like putting pretty good performances back to back to back. And I think it's just part of what exactly what he's saying. Like he sees somebody go out there and it's just kind of a chain reaction when you see your boys out there doing their thing. It's like, all right, now I got to keep the line moving and basically just keep that chain reaction going. And uh, it's pretty cool to have, like you said, the guys that I've played with coming up pretty much be along that side and then have guys like Grinky in there to kind of come more of the experience side and just help us navigate that and just being young players and getting through the experiences that we've had, the ups and downs, to have a guy like that there to kind of hold everybody together and help get us through. It's pretty special for sure. Yeah. Was there any stop along your minor league journey that you enjoyed the most, whether it be a city? I know Omaha is a great city. My first year I went to Idaho Falls, which was just like – a part of the country that I've like never seen yeah. before. So that was like honestly super cool. It was just kind of like the bus rides through that like Montana and just that kind of area. It was just like really pretty. Double A was nice. There was some cool spot. Like I really like Wichita. It was like yes. just kind of a cool city, really nice stadium. So there's definitely being able to play in Frisco. That was pretty much going back home. So that was pretty cool as well. And then Triple A, everything's just like everything just keeps getting nicer, like yeah. stadiums and stuff. So it just gets the atmosphere gets a lot cooler for sure as you go up. But I think um Nothing like super crazy, but I think that first year was honestly just really cool, like being in that part of the country that I'd never really seen before. We had like a trip to Jackson Hole we took during the All-Star break, so we were able to explore a little bit and stuff like that, so it was pretty cool. So you rotate your facial hair, Bob does, there's a couple other guys that do. What goes into this? I'm so curious because I cannot find a rhyme or reason to what you guys do and how you decide to change it well, up. Mine goes based off of where I'm at because when you're in the minors, you can't have a beard. So when I get sent down, I go with the mustache, but then I try and grow the beard back as fast as I can. My wife does not like I the was mustache, ask what your but wife she thought. likes. She doesn't like the mustache, but she likes the mustache more than no facial hair. Yes, she says no facial hair. Like she can't. She can't do it. So. No. We stick with the mustache and then I just try and grow the beard back as fast as I can. But that's the reason for me. I've just always gone with the mustache when I'm in the minors. So I just kind of keep rolling with it. And then I, I can't do the mustache here. Yeah. I try and get this back as soon as I can. Yeah. So you guys don't plan anything around it. You're just no, like, eh, just feeling it. Not really. I, okay. I don't know what, like, yeah, some of the guys got the goatee going. Like, I think Mizovich has got some, oh, I don't know what a, he's trying um, out yeah. right now. He's got like long mustache <laughs> with like a short goatee. I don't know. And then Massey's kind of testing out the waters. I don't know. It's just kind of everybody's kind of, we got a lot of young guys that can't really grow it all in oh, yet. Stop. So they're trying to figure out what, <laughs> trying to figure out what it is. Yeah. Yeah. They like Matt, the little patchy. Bob, I, he he, I, he just he can't get it in here. He's just got to stick with the goatee if he's going to do it. But I think he only has a mustache right now. Uh, as of yesterday, yesterday he, had a he showed up with just a mustache. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure he had the goatee. I don't know. Yes, what, and whatever you guys like, take your picture and like his picture is with the goatee. <laughs> and I think your picture, you have like some kind of weird facial hair too. And it like so yeah, when you're know. pitching and I see it up there, it do, it like, doesn't what? look like you yeah. like not like look right now. now. Yeah. It's kind of just always rotating. All you right. never know. I respect it. You can't wear makeup, so you got to, yeah, exactly. like, you know, change it up some other right. type of way. Exactly. Tell us some about what your mentality is like when you go to the mound or, or on a pitching, like when you are starting that day. For those that don't know, the starting pitcher that day always gets to come in a little bit later. You guys have like a certain time where you have early work and things that you have to go through. The schedule is listed on the TV when you guys get into the clubhouse. But the starting day pitcher can come in like I think as late as like three or something, right? Yeah, just usually just we usually have like a scouting meeting. So yeah. basically just based off whatever time that is, you can yeah. come in. But for me, I try and keep it as like normal as possible sure. in the morning and just try not to think about it too much because uh, sometimes I get a little stressed out. I don't know if you guys saw what happened, but whatever, you know, yeah. sometimes the stomach gets a little uneasy. So I got to try, especially just try and keep my mind off of it, you know, eat a normal breakfast. And then kind of once I get to the field, they'll take that first hour or whatever, kind of do the crossword, kind of chill for a little mm -hmm. bit. And then once it comes time for the scouting meeting, it's kind of go time. And then I kind of flip the switch and kind of go into game mode and just kind of go through my stretching routine, whatever, roll out, get ready. And then uh, for me, it's just like, I don't know, I just get pretty amped up. I just super competitive. So whenever I get out there, I feel like I'm pretty intense and kind of just in my own 
zone. Like I try and just kind of stay in my zone, you know, not interact with too many people yeah. or whatever, just kind of keep to myself. Um, but yeah, I think like a lot of guys give starting pitchers hard times because they're like have one this one day a week that they're just that's all they care about and they're just like locked in and everybody's like oh you put, put your AirPods in today because <laughs> it's your start day blah 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 like now you're not going to talk to us whatever so some guys give you a hard time but yeah it's just like you get one day every five days to do yep. it so it's it's a big day for sure but I think it's it's super fun and I just love kind of having that day just to be able to settle in and do your thing and get that routine going and then go out to the mound and do what you do it's fun Can't yeah it. you know you mentioned uh you know what happened you got sick on the mound a couple of starts ago you know i think a lot of the greats do that M michael jordan when yeah. he played with the flu uh, in the 1997 my, my brother sent yeah. me a list of like people that have thrown up in competition afterwards and it was a pretty That's good so list, sweet so. your brother did <laughs> yeah. that yeah he was like the top 10 it was like the top 10 greatest athletes that have thrown up during competition or something it was my hilarious. sister would have texted me and been like oh my god you're a loser <laughs> yeah it was pretty funny it was funny but yeah, thankfully, I. it's not the first time it's happened, so I've kind of been through it before, and I yeah. just kind of laughed it off. It is what it is. Wish I yeah. could have got through that last inning. It was the only thing I really cared about. I, didn't, yeah. I wasn't too worried about the puke. Yeah, no, I was. I remember coming in the locker room and talking to you the next day, and I told you I felt bad yeah. because you you really wanted to stay out there, and you weren't physically, like, sick. Like, some, you just have, like, a, right. you know, a, a tweaky yeah, stomach. Yeah, and that you just really wanted to stay out of it. You were more annoyed that you couldn't keep pitching because it's not like you had the flu. It's not like you were sick or right. anything. exactly. You just have a weaker stomach, which some, some people do, so I felt bad. Yeah, it was, it was annoying, but... But all the, a lot of the greats do it. Exactly, exactly. That's what we'll go with. Yeah. I got a little uh, anti-nausea medicine that we're working with now, and everything's been really good. So I hopefully, love that. Hopefully we got it solved. Great. I love to hear that. Speaking more on, you know, the pitching and going about your routine, for you, what is the most, like, satisfying way to get someone out? Is it a swing and a miss? Is it, like, would you rather have, like, 10 strikeouts or just have, like, a clean game where you're getting ground balls and, and being efficient? I know pitch count is so important, so yeah. a lot of times you guys want to be efficient. Yeah, it's like you, there's a good balance. Like, yeah. striking people out is always fun, but sometimes it takes a lot of pitches, you know, if you get a lot of foul balls or going deep in counts. I think for me it's just I don't really care how I get them out. Just yeah. as quick as possible, it just – Efficient outs are the best, but I think mean, striking out people is fun. That's probably the most satisfying. Striking people out, you can't. It doesn't get better than that. Or like a big double play with like yeah. the bases loaded or something. That's that's always awesome too. Or like my one of my favorites is when there's like a base hit. A guy tries to stretch it into a double, and the outfielder throws him out. That might be the most satisfying because you go from like. I just gave up to hit to like let's go. There's yeah. nobody on now. When you got like Michael so, A. Taylor making like yeah, an over the exactly watching the fence him grab. track balls down out there is just insane. When someone does that, do you like I don't know give him an extra beer like yeah, later you, on in the I evening? need to give him a tip at the end of the yeah, year. Or seriously. Yeah, seriously. Especially yeah, because there's no telling how many doubles and stuff he saved out there just running all over the place. It's impressive. Yeah. But yeah, definitely if something crazy happens, you should yeah give him a beer or something for sure. I've always wanted to know when you guys have a visit to the mound, and I know visits are strategic. Sometimes Cal goes out there. Sometimes Skip goes out there. Sometimes it's it's just Salvi going out there. What do you guys talk about? Like, and you know, don't give us all the trade secrets. We can't do that. Yeah, but yeah. It's it's usually it depends on the situation. Like most of the time, it's just kind of give you a break. Like yeah. if you've given up a few, given up a couple runs, you know, given up a few hits. Like hey, we're just coming out to give you a breather. Like. This is what maybe talk about the guy that's coming up. This is how we need to attack him, blah, blah, blah. It's usually pretty positive, like, unless uh, sometimes it's not positive, mm -hmm. depending on what you're doing out there. But for the most time, most of the most, for the most part, it's like strategy. Yeah. Talking about the guy that's coming up or what we need to do to get out of a certain situation. Or if they, especially like if they bring in a pinch hitter, like they'll come out because yeah. we may not have really talked about that guy before the game. So just come out and mainly talk strategy. And then when Skip comes out there, it's usually your sign you're, you're going out but um yeah for the most part it's usually pretty positive and just kind of strategic have you ever said something and forgot to use your glove to cover your mouth and been like oh crap uh, and then had to go in and like because i know you guys do that but sometimes i see people and they're like talking i think and, it just depends what you're talking about <laughs> yeah um but yeah for the most part it's just you probably don't really need to cover your mouth i, I never time. thought it's so i'm like, like who's gonna read their lips from everybody this else away? does it so everybody's just like yeah, I don't know if they think they're watching like the live feed and they're gonna be like, "Hey, the curveball coming first pitch." I don't, know. I don't know, but yeah, it's definitely a funny thing that everybody just covers their mouth. Yeah, probably unnecessary. So tell us what it's been like adjusting to playing with PitchCom this year. I like it. I think it just makes things more simple, okay. and you don't have to worry about four sets of signs or whatever yeah. with runners on second base. I think that's the biggest part is when you get base runners on, you can just 
you don't have to worry about them stealing signs yep. or anything really um but like when we have nobody on usually we'll just go with the fingers anyways because mm -hmm. it's just a little quicker but i think it's pretty cool and like you can literally do everything through there like you can say like i want to chase pitch or pick off whatever so i think it's it's pretty cool and i think it may or may not help things speed up a little bit i don't know but we'll see yeah to be seen yeah 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 yet to be seen but i like it i think it, it makes things easier just communication wise and then just uh like i said with runners on i think it helps the most for sure yeah i want to talk more about salvi and and zach and what's it been like working with them do you have a moment in your time with salvi that stuck out to you where you were just like oh, this is why this guy's the best um i remember a play actually uh I think it was my game against Baltimore earlier this year, and it was like a swinging bunt or something, and he made just like an unreal play on it, and he like pointed to the gold plate on his uh, chest protector, and I thought that was like the most BA thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I was like, that's sweet. That's why he's the freaking best. Salvi can like, do that. Yeah, look at the gold right yeah. here. He was like, that's why I got it. That was probably like one of the moments I was like, that was, that was pretty cool, and it was an unreal play. But I think just having him back there, I think the biggest thing for me, obviously everybody knows how good he is defensively and how, how well he hits, but I think just the knowledge and the preparation that he has coming into the game just makes me feel way more prepared going out to the mound, just knowing how prepared he is yeah. as well. It just kind of makes you feel more confident in the game plan and know that he's done his part and I've done my part, and it makes you feel pretty confident going out into the game, just knowing that he's put in the work and just the knowledge that he has just from experience. It's mm -hmm. just you can't. You can't make up for anything like that with, without experience, really. Yeah. So it's just like super special to have a guy like that kind of as the captain, you know. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, when it comes to Zach, I know he's, you know, he's not going to talk your ear off or, or talk much at all, but you he, you can really, uh, you know, watch him go out about his business and how he goes about, you know, it in the clubhouse. Is there anything you've taken from him? He's so, like, from what I've, like, learned and saw of him, he's, like, very methodical and, like, he dissects, like, all everything in yeah, his head. He, he just has, like, a very, such an in-depth, yes. I think, like, perspective of the game, and it's just so unique just with his preparation and like if you see him like you'll today starting you'll see him like walking around and he's like looking around the field yes. before the game like like, a, like he's the, never been here yeah, yeah like he's never been here like checking the wind like oh what's it doing today <laughs> like how's it pretty much how's it playing today like <laughs> it's like he's going up to a golf course like how's it how's it playing today you know like i don't know but he just has such an in-depth perspective and just his the way he goes about his scouting and stuff just so in depth and i mean it's also part of experience too you know he's thrown against a lot of these teams and yeah. guys for a long time now but obviously there's new guys always coming in and out so it's it's always changing but i think just uh the way he goes about his business is just so professional and obviously it, i'm sure with that experience like you you're gonna have a pretty solid routine by now i'm sure and just but i think it's also it goes to show like he's been doing it for so long and he still is so in depth you know yeah. like you think maybe a guy who's done it for 15 years like oh yeah i've won a few cy youngs whatever i kind of got this whatever, whatever. <laughs> but yeah but he is so just i mean never never a day off yeah. he's so just lives and breathes baseball it's just super cool to watch and just kind of try and take everything you can and just watch him go about his business and um yeah just try and take every little thing you can whenever like you said whether it's in the dugout just having a little conversation or in the bullpen just watching him throw some bullpens is just like this is crazy to watch he just doesn't miss a spot it's yeah just like this is crazy this is unreal but, yeah it is just kind of unreal but pretty cool i would love to know what you like to do on your off days i would assume you like to spend time with your wife because there's only a certain amount of time you Absolutely. guys get together so what do you guys like to do together on those days we're pretty we're pretty chill for the most part we may go shopping or whatever over to the plaza last off day we actually went and did an escape room together oh just God. us two which is the first time we've ever done it like we usually go with like friends whatever and it actually went pretty well we were surprised we worked together pretty well we made it out so that was impressive um but yeah we do like escape rooms we just kind of whatever we went to the chiefs game uh that that preseason game that night so usually try and find something to do i think like tomorrow we're off we're going to try and go i think uh luke bryan and like um what's his name? riley green are in sure. town tomorrow night so i think we're going to try and go to the concert so just usually try and probably hang out like for most of the day and then try and go get a nice dinner or whatever just kind of relax since we're always go 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 for the most part I would love to know what the best golf game you ever like played was. You said you're not that good, but it does sound like you're pretty good. So like, is there a course, um, first of all, you love? And what's like the best golf game you've ever played? I play, um, my wife's parents are members at a course in Prosper, um, Texas, which is like right north of Dallas. 
so I play up there a lot. There's actually like a group of his friends that I started playing with kind of like during the COVID stuff and during the off season. So it's like me and a bunch of 40, 50 year old men and we just have a blast out there on Wednesday mornings. Um, so I play out there quite a bit. Um, the best game I actually shot was on my birthday this past year. Really? Yeah, I shot a 75. Is that good? And that's that's like pretty good, but that's that was like very rare. Like I'm usually like mid 80s, which isn't bad. It's like pretty decent, but 75 was like very rare. I, I might not ever do it again, but it was cool for that day. What contributed, do you think? I was just locked in. It's just one of those days. I just was hitting my drives in the fairway. The next shot was on the green, and then I was like two putting for par, and it was just but keeping the ball my issue is usually keeping the ball in play like off the tee box usually my irons are decent but sometimes i spray the driver it's kind of like my fastball oh my gosh you are speaking another language i have no clue what you're <laughs> saying right now the driver the green the spray you, know, you know what a driver is i mean i do but like yeah. you're talking about doing all these things like i spray the ball like it goes i don't know where it's gonna go it just all there's right. no telling but that day i had it you know what the fairway is yeah that's least. where the grass yeah. is short that's where you want to hit it yeah, yeah. I was in it in the fairway, and yeah, that was the best day. But I, like I said, I could never shoot a 75 again. Y'all never know. Well, let's not. Let's I hope not, it does happen because yeah, it was pretty it fun. Out. Yeah, I just needed to get more consistent. Yes, it's a lot like pitching, honestly. Yes, honestly, I believe that 100%. Now, do you think that you could bat if you had to? It's probably been a while. I think my best bet would be to get a bunt down, maybe. Really? But some of the, I don't think I'm. I'm not going to be eager, too eager to jump in the box against some you of these guys. You don't think so? No. I don't really want any part of, like, Jacob deGrom throwing a 100 Oh, yeah, no one does that. Yeah, I don't I don't think – I don't know. I'd be pretty I, – I feel like I might be able to put it in play. Okay. Depending on who it is. I'd probably be lucky, but I haven't had seen a live pitch probably since my senior year of high school. Okay. Which was 2016. I don't know. If you had to like take like if you were batting could, against one of our position players, yeah, who, that's what I was gonna say. I, could, I would love to get I could get in that bat off a position player, not Michael Taylor. I, I saw him throwing ninety four. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe uh, Dozier had a little like cutter action. Yes, days. he did. Slot registered as a slider, so maybe. It was I was good. noticing that too. I'm yeah. like, this, is he really throwing six sliders yeah, in a row? He was just kind of like trying to cut it a little bit. It worked. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I don't know if you saw that Cody Clemens kid strike out yes, Otani the sure. other night. <laughs> That was pretty funny. That was hilarious. It's just like so crazy to me that that can happen. I know. It's just like some guy can come in and strike out one of the best hitters in the league. I know. A position player too. Yeah, like I tried to do that and I ended up over the fence. Yeah. And like I'm supposed to be the one that can strike him out. But, but baseball's so it's just funny. Baseball. Like, yeah, yeah, it's so funny like that. The craziest stuff can happen. And the mental aspect of it, I would think, is is so tough because one day you got your best stuff and you yeah. like no one's touching you and the next day for some reason, it just doesn't feel as good. How yeah, how do you weird. like monitor that mental aspect? That's what, like you we talk sometimes how it's like we do the same thing. Like like we're, it's not like we're trying to do anything different. Yeah. Like we're literally trying to do the same thing every time we go out there, and you can get just such different results. Like one day you just have no idea where the ball is going, and you're like, what what, what is, is going, going on? on? Like, <laughs> I'm supposed to go right where I wanted to. Like what's happening? Yeah. I don't know. It's just like. I think it, I don't know, really. It's just such a unique game, and there's just so many ebbs and flows and ups and downs, failure. It's like, it is a game of failure. So yeah. it's like you said, it's just, you have to be tough mentally just to be able to get through the ups and downs and the adversity, and it's such a long season compared to any other sport. It's just very unique, but it's it's awesome. Do you take special care of your pitching arm? Like, you know what I mean? Like, if if you're like have your arm around your wife and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, arm's yeah. falling asleep, gotta put so the that, problem, gotta the take problem, care of it. We we have a problem because she always sleeps like closest to the wherever the bathroom is. Yes. Like, she sleeps on that side of the bed, and then in our apartment, it's like on my right side, so I can't ever like put my arm around her. <laughs> and like, and if I do, it's I'll last like two minutes. I'll be like, hey, my whole arm, I can't, <laughs> it's falling asleep. So we can't do this. We're gonna have to get it out. But, yeah, no, I, that's. That's pretty much like the only thing I try not to like sleep on it and stuff because yeah. there's been a few times where I'll wake up, especially if it's like the day I pitch and I wake up and my arm's like stuck underneath me and it's completely asleep and I'm like, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to yeah. pitch today. Like I can't straighten it out and then it comes back to life and it's okay. But it's like the same feeling every time. I'm like, oh no. Oh, oh no, no. Right? this is how it ends. Yeah. Have you this seen is, Rookie of the, the Year? End. This is how it changes. Exactly. It's exactly. funny because I was coming to the elevator and uh, and Quas was getting in the elevator and he went to put his hand in to like keep it for me and I was like, don't no. do that. <laughs> 
crush his hand. Yeah, and he's like, it was my, it was my other hand. Yeah, and I'm like, go, thank go. goodness. We don't need that on the injury report. Exactly, exactly. All right, we are going to do some lightning round questions to end okay. things. Right. Um, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on these. What is the most accurate baseball movie? And do you like it? Like, what's your favorite baseball movie? How accurate do you think it is? Most what's your opinion on that? I mean, I love, I like Sandlot. It's just a classic. Yeah. Like, just little kids, like, playing baseball. I feel like that's kind of like growing up as a kid that would have been so awesome yeah but um i don't know there's a lot of good i used to really like uh the rookie with uh what's his name dennis uh dennis quaid quaid yeah, yeah i'm pretty sure it's him yeah he was like pitcher and he was like was like working at home and all yeah. of a sudden i used to like that movie um i don't know there's too many good ones but i th I, th I think sandlot like yeah it's the most basic but classic, classic. Uh, let's hear a common misconception about people from Texas. About people from Texas? Yeah. We're not all country. Okay. Everybody thinks like, oh, you don't have an accent? You're from Texas? That's so I'm true. Like, you really don't. I'm from Dallas. Like, I didn't grow up. Yeah. It's just, I think everybody thinks like from Texas, you're like, oh, howdy, like cowboy. Howdy. But, <laughs> I mean, er yeah, there are a lot of those people, yeah. but not everybody. What is your most unpopular food take or strange food take? I don't like sushi. Okay. A lot I of people, I feel like that's not super like no. uncommon, but a lot, so many people do like sushi. Like guys are like, you want to go get sushi? I'm like, I've gotten better actually, but I'm trying to think of something that like, I don't like that everybody likes. I don't know. I'm kind of a little picky, but okay. mainly just like seafood and some veggies I don't like. Okay. Not a veggie guy, not, not a, a seafood guy. I, I do like some veggies, but like tomato, tomatoes, onions, pickles. Everything like on a burger, I don't eat, and everybody always gives me a hard time about that. <laughs> Just the bread and the yeah. burger? I like the, I'll do the lettuce. Okay, got a little crunch in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We love to hear that. Uh, what kind of music do you like to listen to to get yourself in the zone? In the zone, I like, I like a, a lot of music, but like if I'm trying to get in the zone, it's usually some kind of like EDM or okay. like a big booty mix or something like that. <laughs> That's not like inappropriate for the kids out there. It's just the name of like a. It's like a kind of a mashup kind of sure. thing, a bunch of songs put together. Um, but like if I'm just driving, it's usually country or okay. just like, not rap, but like maybe like Post Malone or yeah. something like just good vibes. But nothing like hard rap or and no heavy metal or anything like that. Tell us what your guilty pleasure TV show is. Guilty pleasure TV show, Outer Banks. Wow. Did your wife drag you into that? No, she hates oh, it. Oh, wow. <laughs> she hates it. Yeah, that's why it's my guilty pleasure. You can is ask it... Bob about that one, too. We both... we Bob's into it, too? Yeah, we're big on the Outer Banks train. Yeah. I agree. Great excited, show. Excited for the new season. Same. Yeah. Riveting. But, yeah, my wife, it, she thinks it's embarrassing. Oh, wow. It's all right. I'll wear it. <laughs> she won't watch with me, so I got to watch with Bob. Okay. At least you didn't say, like, The Bachelor or, like, Real Housewives no, or something. No, I used to watch The Bachelor, but I haven't watched it in... A few seasons. You're not missing much. It's no. gone downhill. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a big, like, my, my wife also makes fun of me because I'm into the big, like, singing shows. Oh, like American, like American Idol? American Idol, The Voice. I always like those. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. All right. Outer Banks and the singing shows. All right. Now, have you ever heard someone yell something from the crowd? And if you have, what's been the best thing that you've ever heard yelled from the crowd? <sighs> even if it wasn't, even you know if it was what? when you were in the dugout, you, you know weren't what? Actually, pitching. Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay. Bobby is at the plate, and he had like a, this was he was like 0 for two or 0 for three or something, and he was some guy said something to the fact of like some you know he won like the Gatorade National Player yeah. of the Year, and he screamed something about like Gatorade National Player of the Year, more like Powerade National Player <laughs> of the Year or something, and everybody in the dugout just like started dying laughing because it was like pretty quiet. And this guy's just screaming out of nowhere, and we were like, that was pretty good. I like that one. That one got a good laugh out of everybody. Did I Bob laugh too? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I can't really think of anything like when I'm out there, I can't really hear if people are yelling at me, which yeah. I'm sure they are. But um, actually in New York this year when I was warming up before the game, uh, one of the guys said that uh, they were going to get me. They were like, we're going to get you sent down today, and I got option the next day. So oh, my gosh. Like, but that one was kind of. Like, kind of hurt a little. Yeah, kind of that one. That one struck deep. Kind of stuck. No, it was it was just kind of funny. I kind of laughed it off a couple of days later. I was like, it's kind of funny that this guy said that before the game, and the next day it happened. But That's the best thing you can do, though. Honestly, is yeah, just yeah. There's roll so many. Punches. Yeah, exactly. That's the only thing you can do. Nobody. After a good game or a bad game, who is the first person you call or want to talk to? My wife. Okay. 
whether I'm on the road, she's not there, I'll call her first and then call my parents after that. Um, but yeah, usually she's here, so I'll just go like give her a hug in the wife's room before the media comes in, whatever, and say what's up. So yeah, usually wife and then I'll call the parents for sure. Good answers. Yep. We yep. love it. Anything else you want to tell us before we let you go? I don't know. I don't really have like anything super exciting. Um, oh, well then we'll just thank you for being here yeah, for hanging out with awesome. us. I had a blast. Good. Thanks for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Good. Well, we're glad hope, to hear I it. I hope the people enjoy it. I think they will. I think they'll love it. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jonathan Heasley, for being our guest today. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. We are glad to have you here.